welcome back to God's Big Dinner Party. Today is finally the day that we are celebrating with our God. <laughs> That's right. I'm so excited for today. But, Pastor Mary and Nathan, it looks like you forgot your waiter outfits. Well, friends, I'm glad that you're excited for the party. You're right, we have been wearing waiter outfits all week getting ready, but we've got on a little bit different party clothes. One of the most important meals that we hear about in the Bible is a dinner party that Jesus shared with his disciples near the end of his ministry. So close to the end, we actually call it the Last Supper. And during this meal, Jesus shared bread with his disciples. And he said it was like he was giving them his body. And if they ate it, it meant they had forgiveness for their sins because they could be a part of Jesus and the party he was trying to get started here on earth. Now, this meal was so important that we actually still reenact it when we get together to worship here at church. We call it communion, and these are the outfits that Pastor Mary and I wear for that. Wow, Jesus is an unexpected kind of God, turning something as simple as bread into something as marvelous as forgiveness. Well, that's just the kind of God we have, Minerva, a God of miracles who loves everyone and wants our help to share that love with the world. With our God, you never know what can come of just a simple thing like yeast and water or an act of kindness. With our God's help, our actions can rise and grow in the world, and you never know whose life might be changed because God needed us to help. Well, I'm always excited to hear what God might be cooking up, and it seems like it's always even better than I expected. Well, that's how it is with our God, Sophie. Actually, that's a really great segue into our special day of VBS today. You see, since bread was so important to the Last Supper, we thought that we should probably have some bread for our party, too. But even though bread has only a few ingredients, it can be kind of complicated to make, so we thought we'd better consult with an expert. Our friend Andrew has invited his friend, Father Dom, to show us how. Pastor Mary, now do you mean public access TV legend and local celebrity Father Dom of Breaking Bread with Father Dom? I am a huge fan. You are exactly right, Sophie. Thank you for that great introduction. Should we see what they have to teach us today? Hello campers, welcome. It is Thursday and that means it is party day. So all week long we've been preparing for this day. We've sent out invites, we've made our party favors, we bought all the food. Now we're ready to come together and make our meal for our dinner party. And today we have a very special guest. This is my very good friend, Father Dominic Garamoni who has taken the time out of his schedule to come and party with us. So, Father, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure to be here. I'm always ready for a party. Oh, you yeah. know that. And, which, and if there's a party, chances are I'm going to be cooking. Oh, and, and that's, just, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, in case you're wondering uh, why I'm wearing this thing with the hood and so forth, and that I, I'm a Benedictine monk, okay? A monk is a Roman Catholic religious person, like your pastor, except for that monks don't get married, and they don't live in houses, they live together as brothers. A group of monks joins together in what's called a monastery. So I live in a monastery with other monks, and that we, we call each other brother, okay? Uh, brother, I'm called Father Dominic because I was ordained a priest as well. So we have brothers and fathers in the monastery. And just like any other family, we take turns doing chores. And one of the things that I do for our house is I do a lot of the cooking and a lot of baking. Okay, and Andrew actually and I have baked a lot together in the kitchen, uh, both when I had him in school as a student, and then since then he's helped me with bread demonstrations. And so we've worked together quite a bit. And, yeah. Uh, and so, so we got the routine down. So we're we're ready to instruct you on how to make some rolls, uh, some bread for everybody to share at, at your party. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about that and you, what you want to kind of do with the this particular recipe. Yeah, so I thought that we'd make some tear apart rolls. Oh yeah, they'll pull apart, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So that way, when you sit down to your dinner table, you can just take a piece of roll off, pass it around the table to everyone invited. Oh, right. Very and similar to what happened at the Last Supper kind of thing. Exactly, at the Last Supper, Jesus said, take this and eat this, and they pass it around. Everybody pulled off a piece. They broke off pieces of that loaf. 
And so, uh, so yeah, this will be exactly the same thing, but just in a slightly different form. Uh, so uh, what we're gonna do is like make essentially a dinner rolls, okay? So we're gonna start with some kind of liquid, in this case, milk, okay, warm milk, and uh, some yeast, okay? So yeast is this substance right here. It's like a little powder, okay? Sometimes it comes like this, or it might come in a little square package, okay? So this is the equivalent of a package of yeast. So we're gonna start by pouring our warm milk in here. And it's, yeast is kind of like a baby, okay? So you don't want really hot water. You just want it to be sort of lukewarm. Like when, you're, when you were little, you know, and your parents gave you a bath, you know, they didn't put the scalding hot water in and make, you know, like they were making baby soup or something. <laughs> Instead, it was very, just slightly lukewarm, okay? And then that's what's comfortable for the yeast. And then we're gonna put in a little bit of sugar. This is about a tablespoon of sugar. And we're gonna sprinkle that in there. You wanna make sure you have a bowl with kind of high sides because we're gonna stir stuff and there's gonna be flour, okay? So we're gonna stir that sugar so it dissolves a little bit. And then we're gonna add the yeast. Now the yeast is gonna consume the sugar. It's like a living organism, okay? It's actually a living thing, yeast is. And it's in its dry form, it's like a sleep. So we put it in the bath, it wakes up. And it starts to eat the sugar. And then it's gonna produce carbon dioxide gas, which will make the bread rise. You know, like how you like nice poofy bread that's soft and got holes in it. The yeast helps make that happen. So, now that's different than the bread that Jesus would have used at the last supper, yeah, right? The bread that Jesus would have used would have been unleavened. So right. no, no yeast back then yeah. for them to use. Well, there was yeast to be used, yes. but they didn't use it for the ceremonial bread for Passover, okay? They had actually learned to make bread with yeast when they were in slavery in Egypt. And so at Passover, they ate unleavened bread as a reminder when they weren't slaves, okay? Because God was gonna free them from the Egyptians and set them uh, loose so that they could go to the promised land. So that for them, unleavened bread was the bread of freedom. So in the same way, we use unleavened bread, uh, Jesus used unleavened bread at the Last Supper because he was gonna free everybody from our sins. And so that, again, was the bread of freedom. So we're gonna stir this until it's completely dissolved, and then we just gotta let it sit for a little while while the yeast wakes up and starts to bubble, okay? So we're just gonna let that sit for a bit. Now, if you uh, can't eat milk, okay, because you have an allergy, you can use other kinds of milk like oat milk and so forth, uh, or you can just use warm water, it will work just fine. Milk makes kind of a tender crumb, softer like dinner rolls are supposed to be, but you can make this, uh, this recipe with just plain, uh, just plain milk, uh, uh, warm water as well, and you'll still get a, a good result. In the, in the ancient times, a lot of bread was made with just flour and water. Uh, that's what unleavened bread has to be made out of for Passover, it was required. It couldn't be anything but uh, flour and water. Uh, but uh, since then, we've learned to kind of add all kinds of things to make bread flavorful, you yeah. know, so. But for right now, we're just gonna let that sit for a little bit and let it uh, warm up. Now, I have a question. For okay. our friends that might have gluten issues, is okay. there a type of flour that you suggest for them to use in well, this case? Well, this particular recipe will not work as a gluten-free recipe okay. unless you've got that really special blend sure. that's like, baked, it's, they call it one-to-one. -one. Yep. So, and if you're, if you're gluten intolerant or somebody has a gluten allergy in your family, your parents probably already know all about that. Okay, maybe you do already, okay? Uh, so uh, a, a lot of those, but it has to be a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, flour, okay? So it'll say gluten-free, one-to-one, meaning you don't have to do anything or add anything else to it in order to make it work. We're using just ordinary all-purpose flour. It doesn't matter what brand it is. It could be bleached or unbleached, uh, but we're just using ordinary all-purpose flour for this. But if you have to use a gluten-free baking mix of some kind, make sure that it's that one-to-one -one that doesn't have to have other things added to it. You won't quite get the same result. It is hard to make really good on uh, uh, gluten-free uh, dinner rolls like this. And you might end up making muffins instead. <laughs> Either <laughs> way, it'll work out fine. It'll still gonna work out just Something fine. Something you always used to tell me, it's, it's food, it'll forgive you. Right? That's right, it's bread, it's gonna forgive you, okay? I mean, that's, that's how it works with, uh, with baking. Now, this has still got a little while, it's still kind of waking up. I'm gonna help this dissolve a little bit more. 
Oh, by the way, please make sure that you've cleaned your hands, washed your hands thoroughly before you do any of this, because you're gonna get your hands in the dough, which is one of the best parts of the whole process. Now, and when you first started making bread with me, what was you know what were you expecting? Like, you know, did you were you worried? Did you think it wasn't gonna turn out? Like what? So to this day, I still worry that it's not going to turn out. So I'll, I'll throw everything in. I'll be like, did I remember everything? Did I remember to put the yeast in? Yeah, and I'll like go. every like 20 minutes when we're waiting for it to rise, I'll look and peek at it. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. It's, it's working there. Now, you'll want to make sure that you use the recipe that we've posted online. So follow the directions very carefully. They will be complete and they'll tell you everything you need to know. Okay, so and that's one of the things that we learn about baking is that following the recipe is important so that you have the right balance. It doesn't have too much salt or too much sugar or not enough yeast or too much flour. We want that kind of proportion in the recipe, just like we need proportion in our lives. You know, that we need to have times when we're with our family and times with friends and time when we're alone. We need time with God. We need time with the community. We need time praying alone. We need time spending with the scriptures, time reading other things, time to play sports, all those different things that we do we want proportion and balance in our life. If all you ever did was sports, then your life would be out of balance. If all you ever did was pray in church, your life would still be out of balance. We want the whole person to be in proportion and that's why a recipe kind of teaches us that about having that balance in your life between the various activities. And along with that, following the steps in order too. Correct. Oh, that's that the could, other thing. That could change the outcome of what comes right, right, right. You want to make sure you're following the steps in order as well. And one of the things that's that's nice about bread is that it teaches us that discipline of reading and then acting, which is precisely what we do with the scriptures. Yeah. We read the Bible. We read Jesus's words. We read things, the, the prophets in the Old Testament. And we read that and we understand it and then we put it into practice, okay? So that's this exact same thing. Oh, I'm seeing foaming up here. Oh, yeah. You see a little foaming Absolutely. here? Oh, that's looking nice. Okay, so we're going to add an egg to make this a little richer, okay? And did, you had a fork for me, okay? Right. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and beat that with a fork? You can use a whisk too. Ooh. I'm gonna get some shell in there if I'm not careful. Oh, I missed it. Okay, good. Oh, we're good. <laughs> I thought I was gonna get shell all over it. That really shattered. <laughs> so you wanna beat the egg up a little bit so it's uh, it's not uh, in, in chunks. You know, like the yolk needs to be beaten up and mixed in with the white part of the egg as well. And that's gonna make our dough very rich and yummy. Again, very different from the bread that was served at the Last Supper, but still, for our supper, we're gonna make ours a little more fancy, as it were. Okay. Now, one of the things that goes into bread is salt. Now, if you're on a low salt diet or somebody in your family's on a low salt diet, you can reduce the amount of salt. We're gonna put in one teaspoon. Okay, we're gonna use a special measurement, okay? And I'm gonna teach you something that's very important. Do not measure over the bowl, okay? So here I am, if I were gonna measure this thing and I'm gonna measure out one teaspoon, and then what happens if I hold it up too far? And then, oh no, no, I was like, and then you've got way too much salt, remember, proportion. So instead of doing it over the bowl, I'm gonna do it over like the countertop or like, and go very slowly, very carefully. Okay, there's a teaspoon, okay? Now, you don't have to have a fancy, you can have a wooden spoon, you can have a whisk, you can have a metal spoon. I'm going to let you go ahead and do some stirring. We're going to put that aside because we don't want to put any more salt in. And then I have two tablespoons of melted butter. Again, going to make it richer and a more tender crumb. These are going to be soft dinner rolls. Okay, so go ahead and keep stirring that in as well. Clear this stuff away. Haven't lost your touch, I see. No, no, <laughs> I, I still make bread uh, on a regular basis at home. Good, that's excellent. All right, and then we're ready to add our flour, okay? Now, don't look at the recipe and say, oh, two and a half cups of flour. <laughs> okay, you, <laughs> you add a little bit at a time, okay? So I'm gonna measure out one cup. Okay, and then while he's stirring, this is something you can do with your parents or with your brothers and sisters. While he's stirring, I am gonna shake this in 
so it gets stirred in gradually and there won't be clumps. You don't want the dry clumps of flour in there. So there you go. And then before I add any more, we're gonna make sure that gets beaten completely smooth, okay? I remember the first time Andrew and I were in the kitchen together. And as I recall, he set a knife down. <laughs> yep. He set a knife down, blade up. It set down, he set it down between two things and it was blade up next to the rolling, next to the cutting board. And I reached down with a rolling pin and rolled my hand over <laughs> the, the blade and sliced my the back of my hand up a little bit and he was very very sorry and upset and embarrassed but mistakes like that can happen in the kitchen we just say you know I put a band-aid on washed up and we got back to work so it's and now we look at it and, you know, and we laugh about 12, it yeah. 15 years later yeah. just, just laugh yeah, about it's it. just funny okay so that's all smooth yeah. let's go ahead and tilt that up so we can see we got a nice smooth bed look at that oh that's beautiful all right so let's go and put in one more cup of flour Again, we're gonna go kind of slow, adding a little at a time. That's the nice thing about baking. You can do it by yourself, but it is fun to do it with somebody else. Absolutely. That's true of a lot of things. I mean, sometimes it's nice to read a book by yourself, and sometimes it's nice to read a book aloud to your younger brother, or your little sister, or a group of people. So, and you know, it's always nice when your parents read to you. That's a lovely thing too. You're doing great, Andrew. Making giant strides. This would be a little bit of a workout on your arm. Right? Yeah, yeah, you get forearms like Popeye, That's let good. me tell you. It's good for you. All right. Start working this to where we get yeah, well, a well, dough start to form. The, we can switch to our hands, you, right? Yes, yeah, so you can kind of get to the point where this, let's hold it up closer to the camera. You see how that's kind of coming away from the sides and it's making like a, a clumpy thing. We still need a little more flour before we can knead, but we're getting pretty close. So at this point, we're gonna abandon the spoon. The best part. This is right? the best part. This is so fun. This beats Play-Doh like, you know, way, way, way better than Play-Doh. Okay, so we're gonna end up with maybe two and a half cups of flour, roughly, maybe a little less, okay? So again, you don't wanna put it in all at once. This is the point where you get your hands in the dough and you get to squish it all around in the bowl. So much more interesting, so much more fun than using a spoon. Now, you can do this in a stand mixer. Maybe your mom or dad cooks with a stand, you know, does baking or cooking with a stand mixer, you know, where you put it in the bowl and you turn the beaters on. You can do that. There's a special beater uh, on there that's called the dough hook that you use for that sort of thing. Andrew, I think that's gonna need a little bit more flour on there okay. before we, just a tiny bit, about a tablespoon worth before we get it out on the countertop. All right, so see how it's pulled away, it's kind of sticky. It's a beautiful golden color because of the egg. It's lovely, isn't it? I love the look of that. Now, we're not putting all of the dough in, I mean, all the flour in at once because we still have to knead the dough. And I'll show you what I mean when we say that. We still have to knead the dough. In order to make that happen, we're gonna have to have some flour on the countertop. Okay, I think that's pretty well ready to pull away, get rid of the, that there. And then we're gonna take a little bit of this flour and put a light dusting on the countertop, not too much at a time. You want to be careful because if you put too much on their time, your dough will end up being all dry and there'll be clumps in it and things, okay? So we're going to knead this dough here on the countertop. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to go through this slowly. I'm going to do it a couple times fast just to get it ready to work with. And then I'll do it slowly. But what we're doing is we're incorporating air into the dough so that there are pockets for the carbon dioxide produced by the yeast to go in there so it'll poof up, okay? We want maximum poofage. Remember that term? Yes. <laughs> Very technical term. Very technical term, <laughs> poofage. Okay. All right, this is a little bit messy on my fingers. I'm gonna have to clean my hands off a little better. Um, all right, so a little bit more flour. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate this. And if you have trouble following this because you know the camera angle or something like that, there are some videos online uh, 
about how to knead that you could see it a little bit easier. But the whole idea is that you start with the dough kind of like an oblong or an oval. You pull it back on itself, push down, and roll it forward. Then you turn it a quarter, so it's an oval again, and then pull back and roll it forward. Okay, and as you're doing that, you're incorporating air into the dough and you're mixing all the ingredients and there's protein in the flour that is gonna form like a net. It's gonna be like a stretchy net and it's gonna capture the carbon dioxide produced by the yeast. It's all very scientific. What's interesting about this though, in my opinion, one of the nicest things about this is it kind of reminds us of what it's like when we're trying to become a better Christian, okay? When we're trying to improve ourselves. Mm -hmm. And do you ever feel like, you know, I'm trying, like I'm praying every day and I'm trying to be a good person. It feels like I'm not making any progress. Yeah. Like it's going, like it's going really slow. Yes. You know, like how come I'm not better at this by now, right? Okay. You can't see a whole lot of progress from day to day. You think out of 30 years or, you know, how Yeah, at some point I haven't that. figured it out or... Or, and it's kind of like when you're, like anything, you know, you're, you're learning to, to play a musical instrument. It feels like you're no good with the violin for the longest time. Or you're, you're learning to lift weights and you feel, oh, I feel so weak. It's because the changes that take place inside of us sometimes are very small. And so when you knead the dough, the changes that are taking place inside the dough are tiny, tiny little changes where the, the protein molecules connect together and, and the little tiny, tiny air bubbles get incorporated. And that happens on a very, very small level, okay? And you can't always see it. So you have to be patient as you're kneading. And by the way, the kneading process that we're doing here is gonna take six to eight minutes, okay? Depending upon how fast you go, okay? So we won't do it the whole time. We're gonna take a break after a little while. Uh, but just so you can see that little by little, the dough starts coming together. It starts looking smoother, okay? It's still kind of bumpy here, so yeah. we obviously have a little farther to go, okay? But it becomes smoother and smoother. That's such a soft dough, too. Yeah, it's a lovely soft dough. Well, that's because of the milk and the egg. You know, it's, it's very easy to work with. Notice I keep adding tiny, tiny amounts, like a teaspoon at a time of flour on there because I don't want to put too much or else I'll have a dry, crackly uh, roll and nobody is going to want to eat those. They'll be no, nothing good for anything but croutons. <laughs> so, and you kind of make a mess of your hands. That's okay, too. If, if it really annoys you to have the dough all over your finger, you can see I have dough all over my fingers here. If you want to wash your hands and then come back to kneading, you can do that, too. Now, Andrew, how do I time how long it takes for me to knead dough? Do you remember what I use? You used to, you used to say a prayer, you sing a song. I sing a song, sing a song. I have a song. Yeah. I remember the song. I have a say. kneading song. Yeah. I have a kneading song, yes. Okay, so my Irish ancestors, whenever they had to do any kind of repetitive job, they had a song. So there was a song for sweeping out the hearth and there was a song for harvesting the grain and milking the cows. They would sing these little repetitive songs. So I thought, well, obviously I need a song for when I'm kneading dough. And because, of course, I'm a priest and because I'm a, a good Christian, I thought, well, it's got to it's got to talk about bread the way the Bible talks about bread. So remember, our idea is everybody gets invited to the table. Okay, that's the idea of, of this whole thing is that everybody's welcome at Jesus' table. And so this song, actually, which I wrote years ago, <laughs> actually fits perfectly, perfectly with that theme. So this is how it goes. Bread for the rich man at his table. Bread for the poor one in the street. Bread for the old and bread for the children. Bread is the food that all may eat. Made for the children by their mother. Made by the husband for his wife. Made by the Lord to feed 5,000. Jesus is the bread of life. So I sing that, 
while I need, okay? But again, the idea of all those people are welcome to eat, but everybody eats bread like that. Jesus, what was his big miracle? He fed 5,000 people with loaves of bread, okay? He multiplied the loaves so that everybody could come to the table, that nobody was going to go away hungry. This is starting to look better. You can kind of see how it's getting elastic. Now, normally, I make much larger batches than this. We make great, you know, like the three, three or four times more than, than what we're seeing here. This is a nice size if you're just getting started baking, okay? But we're going to do this. I'm going to actually hand this over to, to uh, Andrew and let him finish it off. But we're going to need for about another five, four or five minutes, and then we'll come back and show you what we do uh, for the next step. All right. Your turn. Tiny bit of flour down. You don't need too much. It's actually it's just about right. Sorry, flour your hands instead, right? Yeah, that's another possibility. It's just flour your hands. See, you still got the technique. What a guy. Still I had a good teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Looks very nice. Ooh, you're faster than I am too. Well, wow. I've got a little. I got like Party in the USA playing in my head. So. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit less traditional. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That dough feels so nice. It's lovely. Yes. But it's starting to feel really Does it feel right? It looks gorgeous. Okay. Is it springy? Oh, yeah. Show me. Oh, oh yeah. See, okay. I don't know if you can see that. Try to get maybe Yeah, a get closer. a little closer. Okay. So when you push it, see how it kind of pulls, back, springs yeah. back, tries to pull back on itself. That means it's becoming more elastic. And that's the goal. Okay, is to have that more elastic sort of feel to it. Oh, look at this, and very smooth top. See, very smooth top, and then squeeze, and it kind of pull back on itself. It's gorgeous. Good job. Good partnership, man. That's right. Rock on with your bad self. Okay, so we're gonna take our rinsed out bowl, okay, and then we're gonna get a little bit of spray, okay, and spray the inside of that, and then Lay our warm dough in there, still warm from the milk, okay, and from the kneading, okay? And then we're gonna let it take a nap, okay? The carbon dioxide, the yeast is gonna start consuming the sugars and producing carbon dioxide, and the dough will start to poof up, okay? And when it's twice as big as it is right now, when it's what we call doubled in size, <coughs> excuse me, then we'll know it's ready to shape into rolls, okay? So we're gonna set that right there so you can see it, and then let's get a cover on it, because you know, when you take a nap, you want a little blankie on you, okay? So we're gonna let that sleep for an hour until it's doubled in size, and then when we come back, we'll punch the dough down, and then we'll shape it, and we'll show you what the next steps are, okay? We gotta clean this counter, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's get to work. Yeah. All right, Andrew, would you like to do the unveiling? I would love We're to. We're gonna see, this should be doubled in volume. It should be twice right. as big. It's been an hour. Here we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> look at that. Oh, no. oh. You're gonna pull it back yeah, here and hold it up. Look at, that. look at that. You see how much larger it got? That's great. Remember that little tiny lump we had in the middle and now it's got all poofed up like this, Beautiful. okay? Now, this is filled with really large air bubbles and the yeast needs to be kind of mixed up a little bit more, okay? Because it's kind of it's kind of tired out, okay, from rising. And we want to make it so that it's going to rise one more time. And so to do that, we kind of have to punch the dough down a little bit or at least deflate it, okay? So, uh, and how do you know that this is sufficiently risen? You put your finger in the middle and the hole stays, see? The hole doesn't close back up again. That means that it's risen as much as it's supposed to. It's actually just deflating slightly, perfectly risen, exactly right, one hour. Okay, so we're gonna put our fist into this and deflate it. And sometimes that happens to us in life too. You know, we get risen up and then we kind of get punched down by something. You know, we get sick or we, you know, we fail at something in sports or we, you know, bomb a test at school or whatever. That's all part of the process of, you know, growing and becoming the person that God wants you to be. So we put that to one side. So that when you get punched down by life, you know, that sometimes that's part of what it means to grow and you've got to come back. We're going to knead this dough just a little bit so that we can get rid of the larger air bubbles. 
and then we're going to shape it into the rolls that can be pulled apart so everyone will get one, okay? So we're going to make this easy. We're going to make eight uh, pieces because it's easy to divide things in half and in half and in half, and then you'll get eight, okay? So the easiest way to do this, I think, okay, is to roll it out into a tube, okay? So you kind of roll the dough out like this into this big fat tube. You can also form it into a circle and divide it, you know, that way, but I think this is a little easier. Okay, so you kind of roll it out and it's all the same length. And then you want to divide it into pieces. Now, don't use a sharp knife. I don't want you kids using a sharp knife. So you could use the end of a, a, a hard spatula or like a plastic knife like this that you use to cut um, lettuce, okay? And then that's safe, okay? Do it, don't, you don't wanna be using something sharp without your parents helping you. But I'm simply gonna divide this into pieces and we're gonna start, we're divided in half. And we have two pieces. And we're gonna divide, I'll let you have one. And then we're gonna divide the halves again and we're gonna get four pieces. This one is a little bit, that one on the end is a little light. I'm going to add a little more to that. There we go. You can kind of feel it. Yeah. Okay? You feel it? Yep. Okay. And then one more time, and then we'll have eight. Okay? You good? I think I'm good. All right. Okay. Nice. All right. This one's a little heavy. That one's a little and that one's a little, too, yeah. oh, this one's a little, a little light. light. Yeah, that one's a tiny bit heavy. heavy too. So we're going to just arrange them a little bit differently. Okay. And here's the fun part. You just got to roll them into balls. Okay. So you roll it under your finger, kind of cup your hand a little bit and it rolls under your fingers like that little bowl, like your hand's a bowl and boom, look at that. Perfectly round. I gotta tell you guys, when I first started baking with Father Dom, this took me forever to get right. And like we would do full loaves, and I'm sitting there like this, and he'd say, "Cage it with your hands." So you make a cage, and you go around, and I do it a couple times, and I just be like this jumbled mess and all that. It would look nice on the bottom. It took forever. So if you don't get it right at first, it's fine. And you know what? If they're a little lumpy, it's okay. Yeah. So let's go ahead and roll these into the balls. Like I said, you make your hand like a cage or a bowl and you roll it underneath there and then you get those beautiful round ones. Look at that. See, yours are as good as mine now. Yeah, there you go. Practice. Practice, I'm telling you. Yeah, you used, I remember the first time you did that. You were so, you were so frustrated. It's like, this is not happening. And it sounds like the easiest thing to do too. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes it takes a little extra work. Yeah. Okay, so there's our eight. Now, you can use any pan. Let's go ahead and look at two possibilities, okay? If you use a loaf pan like this, obviously you could put two, four, six, eight right by each other, okay? Not everybody has a loaf pan at home. You can use an, a brownie pan just like this and we're gonna get the same kind of pull apart results. So if you've got a loaf pan, go ahead and use it. If you've got a round cake pan, you can use that too. Okay, lots of different possibilities but you want to spray it a little bit. And make sure we spray it over a counter surface, everybody. Over the countertop, not over the, the floor. floor. <laughs> because otherwise you will slip and land on your keister. Uh, <laughs> From experience, we don't know that, right? We have done that, yes, <laughs> yeah, so. Okay, so, and then we're just gonna simply line the pan. One, two, three at this end. One, two, three at this end and two in the middle. So I'm gonna tilt that up so you can see what I did there. So there's our eight. It's kind of sliding forward, but we'll put it back into position, okay? So one, two, three, two, one, two, three. But we want them evenly spaced in the pan because just like the dough rose the first time, it's gonna rise again, okay? So it'll get a second rise and then it will fill this pan. You will be amazed. Again, it'll be poofed, but it will not take a whole hour. This time it's probably only gonna take about a half an hour, okay? So in the meantime, go ahead and let's give that, cover that up so we can get a nap. In fact, I'm gonna spray the top so they don't dry out. That's another thing I like it better. You spray the top so it doesn't dry out. 
You want to put it someplace where it's, you know, nicely warm, just room temperature, not someplace too cold or too hot, okay? In the meantime, though, because in a half an hour we're going to put these in the oven, you're going to need to set your oven. But you know what? I'm not going to tell you what that temperature is, okay? Because we want you to get used to the idea, what do you do? We read the instructions and then yeah. put it into practice. We act on it. We read the instructions. We put it into practice. We act on it. Just like when we read God's word, we read the scriptures, we put them into practice, same thing. So while these are rising, you go check your recipe, see what temperature you need to set the, the oven on, go ahead and set it to that temperature, and in half an hour, we'll take a look at these, and you'll see how much they're risen, and they'll be ready to go in the oven. All right, so you're ready for another unveiling? I'm ready. Okay, do the honors. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the poofage there. That's beautiful. See, remember how they slid down because there was all that extra room? Now they've poofed up, okay? And so after we bake these, they'll pull apart, okay? We'll have these beautiful rolls that'll be stuck together because they bake in the oven together, but then they're gonna also pull apart easily as so we pass around. Everybody at the table being able to pull some uh, away. So, and they're gonna rise a little bit more in the oven too. Yeah, they get something that's called oven spring. So they go in the oven and they get even bigger in the oven. Now, I'm sure you went and checked the instructions so you know we're putting them in at 350 degrees and it's gonna go 20 to 25 minutes. Now you might think, yeah, five minute range, why is that? Well, every oven bakes a little differently. Not everybody's oven is exactly the right temperature. Yeah. Mine's a little hot, is yours hotter in the back than in the front? Yes. Yeah, yes. see. So, this is going to go in the oven, and about halfway through, we're going to put it in for about 20 to 25 minutes. About halfway through, at about 10 minutes, maybe at 15, I'm going to turn the pan around in case the oven bakes uh, hotter in the front or the back or whatever. You want to make it so it bakes evenly, so you've got evenly baked all the way around. Okay. But these are exactly right. They're just exactly what we want. Go in the oven, 350 degrees, 20 to 25 minutes. When we pull them out, you will be amazed at how beautiful they are. And the kitchen is gonna smell awesome. You at home are gonna be so happy when you make these because they're gonna smell great. Okay, so into the oven, 350, 20 to 25 minutes. Hi, right, how's it look? It looks beautiful and they are ready to come out. Oh, of the oven. let me see. Whoa. Oh, you're right. Oh, look Whoa. at those beauties. Wow. Holy smokes. Oh my God. Tilt that up a little, a little, a little higher. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're good. I don't have the hands like you. Yeah, you don't have the hot hands. <laughs> I got the asbestos hands. Look at how beautiful those turn. Oh my gosh. Oh, they're just slightly crusty on the outside, but they're really tender in the middle. You can tell they're really soft. Yeah. See, and as you can see, when you pass those around, everybody gets to pull one off. Okay, don't, don't separate them. Leave them close together like this. Now, you're going to let them cool in the pan for about five or 10 minutes, and then you can kind of tip them out and then leave them to cool either on a wire rack or on a, a cloth towel. Don't let them cool just on a countertop because they'll get soggy on the bottom because they're still letting loose some of their moisture. They're actually still baking as it's going on right now. So even though it's tempting to rip them apart and eat them right away, you gotta give them at least a 15 minute rest. But these are gonna be beautiful at the table. And as I said, it's so nice, the idea that you can pass them around and everybody gets some. Everybody pulls off a piece. The idea of the inclusion at the table, that Jesus wants everybody at the table with him, no matter whether we're saints or sinners, whether we're young or old, you know, whether we know Jesus really well or we've just started in our faith journey, Jesus wants us at the table, all of us together. And that, that, that sense of acceptance and love is precisely what a loaf of bread like this is supposed to symbolize. So I hope that you've followed along and made this with us so that you can have that same kind of experience uh, in your family home as well. And, and you, you bake all the time for yeah. your family, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a kind of thing that once you get into it, you may find yourself doing a lot more. You start with dinner rolls, you'll find yourself graduating to tossing pizza dough, you know, so that, yes. that's very, <laughs> very high on my list, just saying. Baby steps though, okay, yeah, otherwise yeah. we'll have, you know, go off on the ceiling. Yeah, you don't want to say, turn off the ceiling fan. And, uh, all right, well, we're going to leave these here, but let's say a blessing over the bread and then also a blessing for all of us, okay? Let us remember we're in the holy presence of God. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of bread, the gift of baking, 
and above all, the gift of your Son, who is the bread of life. May he who multiplied the loaves to feed the hungry people inspire us to welcome many to our own tables. We ask that you bless this bread and all those who take part in it. We ask you to bless in a special way those who go without bread on this day and inspire us to help those who are going hungry. May everything we do and say invite more and more people to your table of fellowship. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. 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 Andrew, thank you so much. This was a great thank time. Thank you so much for joining us. It was yeah. my pleasure. So God bless all of you and keep baking. Remember, one more day at camp tomorrow. So we'll see you tomorrow, guys. Well, that was sure a lot of fun. I hope Andrew and Father Don saved some of those buns to share with me. They looked tasty. They sure did, Sophie. I'm glad you had a good time today. Um, Pastor Mary, now that the bread is ready and everyone can party, does that mean that VBS is over? I don't think I'm ready for it to be done. Well, it's not quite over yet, Sophie. That's right. Even after the party is over, there are still a few things that need to be taken care of. So we'll be back tomorrow to figure out what comes next. Ooh, I hope we'll see all of you tomorrow, too. Bye!